So, both columns have the same expressions, we're just repeating, but it's happening in a different order. So what did you get out of that first row? Three plus seven, we got 10. Seven plus three, did you get the same? Yep, order didn't matter there. What about if I add seven and four together first, or three and seven together first? So, seven and four together will give you 11, plus another three, give you 14. You get the same over here. I get 10, another 4, 14. Yep. 3 times 7, 21. 7 times 3, 21. 6 times 4, 24. Or 3 times 8, 24. So what does that mean with addition and multiplication? So there's a few different laws that we can talk about. First one is the commutative law. You need to know that term. We'll discuss it a lot. Commutative. What does it mean? Changing order. So I can commute two numbers. If I have A plus B, I can add B plus A. I can commute those two, change the order around. Same thing for multiplication. We can also, so we had a commutative here, commutative laws. We can also associate different values together to happen first. So in this case, we associated 3 and 2 together. We associated 2 and 4 together. So we can change the groupings. So the associative, again, you need to know these two terms, commutative, associative. They're very important in math. We can, layman's terms, change the groupings. All right. So, with both addition and multiplication, that can happen. We're taking care of those two operations first. So, we want to use commutative and associative laws to write at least three expressions equivalent to y plus 3 grouped together plus x and 6 times z grouped together times t. So... What are different laws that we can use, and what is it going to look like? So if I use the associative law over here to write an equivalent expression, what are we looking at? So I could associate 3 and x together instead of y and 3 in the beginning. So it could be equivalent to y plus quantity 3 plus x. All right. I could even combine them. I could associate it. So I could do the associative law then commute it. So what does that mean? I changed the groupings and now on the inside I'll change the order around. It means the same thing. Okay? Or I could have just started at the beginning and commuted some things around. So changing 3 and y, I could write it as 3 plus y plus x. They're all equivalent. They'll get you the same, the same result if you're given an x and a y value. Same story for multiplication. So let's look. If I want to use the associative law, what can I do? Instead of grouping 6 and z together, I can group z and t. means the same thing. Or I could first associate it, like we have, and then... Commute. So, I've already regrouped together. Now I'm going to change the order on the inside of the grouping. It all means the same. Or what else could I have done in the very beginning? I could keep the grouping the same, but change the order of the inside of the multiplication. Again, they're all equivalent, just different forms. So, try starting with quantity x plus y plus z, what laws, in what order, the order does matter, were used to get you to a and b? Break those down. Tell me what kind of laws you're talking about. All right, so for the first half, to go from here to here, what had to happen? What law did we use? So the first question should be, did I change the order of these variables at all? I had x, y, z, and now I have x, y, z. So I didn't commute anything, we've only regrouped. So we use the associative law to group y and z. 
That's how we got from here to A. What about from there to B? What do you notice? Has the order changed? Yes. Which one stayed the same? X is in the same exact spot. So he wasn't commuted with anyone, so he shouldn't be grouped at all. So the first thing that we have to do is regroup. We need to change it to this, this rule. We need to use the associative law to get that form. Then what did we do? So first of all, we use the associative law. Then, to go from here to here, what had to happen? We had to change the order on the inside of the parentheses. So then we had to use the commutative. And order does matter. So what happened first? And then how do we change from there? All right, for the second part. Again, the order did change. And what stayed in the same place? Four didn't move. So in the very beginning, he shouldn't be grouped with anyone because I want him to stay where he is. But what do you notice? Three and W, they've switched places. So the first thing we did here was what? We had to switch the order of W and three. So first, we did the commutative law. Commutative, we changed the order. Then what had to happen? So if I do the commutative law, just kind of break it off into a side, side blurb, we get here. Then to move from this one to the next one, what had to happen? We had to regroup around three and four. So then we had to use the associative law. All right. And for part B, we still have the same operation. Everything's being multiplied. But what's changed? The order stayed the same, so we didn't commute anything, but we did associate different variables together. So in that case, we just use the associative law. So know the difference. Association, grouping. Who do I want to associate together? Commuting. If I change the order, how does that affect my expression? They're all equivalent.